Hi there. The first thing that I want to do is say thank you very, very much for listening. If this is your first time listening, welcome. If this is not your first episode, welcome back. The second thing I'd like to do is give you forewarning that in this show we discuss a wide variety of topics, some of which are fun and completely benign, but the conversation can quickly, and without warning, steer into very dark territory. Topics that have and continue to come up are physical abuse, verbal and emotional abuse, sexual assault, domestic violence, and military-type traumatic events. Please understand that we have already gone through a considerable amount of counseling and other professional services, so we may speak flippantly about painful subject matters. This isn't meant to diminish anyone's difficulties or discount anyone's experiences. It's just a part of how we cope with the lot we were given. If we say something that is really upsetting, we're open to hearing from you. Our phone number is 833-589-7637. It's unattended and anonymous and can help us create a better atmosphere for everyone. Finally, I want to stress that being on or listening to a show like this is not an adequate substitute for professional help. If you're in a dark place and need someone to talk to, dial 988. For my fellow veterans, option one is for us. by Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh man, it's been my favorite since I was like nine or something when I first tried it. Dr. Pepper? Yeah. That's um, that's my brother's since I don't even know when. But he's always been a Dr. Pepper boy. I'm a diet soda person. I'm having diet, diet Dr. Dr. Pepper right good. now. Yep. Okay. That, <laughs> yeah. Having that exactly diet that Dr. right Pepper. now. Mine <laughs> is just diet cola. Diet Coke. Yeah. Once in a while diet dr pepper but diet coke is my my jam i prefer diet pepsi to diet coke honestly i don't like it because mm. you can like taste the sucralose in there aspartame uh, or aspartame whatever yeah. the fuck is in there yeah it's, um, it's and with diet coke in diet coke you can't smell it um dr pepper zero is not bad it's I honestly can't tell the difference between regular and zero, but the there's a distinct difference between diet and then the other two. Yeah. yeah With but, the regular sodas, you can really taste the sugar in there. Fuck yeah, they're really thick from all the goddamn corn syrup. Yeah. I can't yeah, stand yeah. that shit. Yeah, very true. I stopped drinking soda for the longest time because of that, and then mm-hmm. I, was, I decided, fuck it, I'm gonna try whatever and yeah. diet something and it's like wow my uh my life has changed for the better yeah just a sliver of uh diet happiness yeah i got into diet soda because at some point i was i think i was in high school did the uh, atkins diet and she needed someone to keep her accountable so i really did not have to do all this shit with her but i did it anyways <laughs> But we started drinking diet soda and I started eating like all low carb and I ended up looking like a Skeletor because I was already really skinny back then. But ever since then, I've started to drink diet soda. I don't remember when or where I started. It just, it just happened. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was because of, because, uh, I don't know. Reasons. Yep. Well, I'm kind of glad she's in. (laughs) (laughs) But I think on that day, I'll be at my parents' house since I leave the next day. Yeah, and then I'll have to see, like, what time my friend wants to meet me. Pretty sure she'll want to get there kind of early. Yeah, I, I like seeing the opening about acts. Concert. I love seeing yeah, opening yeah. acts. Okay, okay. Always. Yeah, I'm like that. Like, when I went to when I went to go see Wu-Tang, we got there all late because... Take Didn't fucking Nas ready. play? Or he performed, right? Yeah. What? Yeah, it was Nas, Nas and Wu Tang, and then Busta Rhymes made an appearance. Are you freaking amazing? Kidding me? That was a bomb ass concert. I've got it all recorded <sighs> on my phone. I would be <laughs> steamed if somebody made me miss that. I would be fucking. Yeah, livid. like when we were, um, like when we were um, going in there, like there was already Wu Tang was already performing by that time. <sighs> 
And I kind of got a little bit pissed. I'm like, man, I probably missed a cool ass song yes. that I like of Wu-Tang. <laughs> but yeah, usually when I go to concerts, I get there way before the, like a 30 minutes or so before the show starts and before the opening act comes in so that I can get drinks and, you know, figure out yeah, I'm trying to where I want to like, spot. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to get with my friend um, to let her know like what time she wants to meet and all that stuff. So I yeah. did dig through a couple of the journal things. Okay. And I have, like I mentioned, the 300 prompts. Burn after writing, we both know. There's another one I yeah. got. It's called Mind Journal. Uh, it's, it is advertised and like written to appeal or tr tr to try to get men specifically to be more be more expressive so okay it, it was pretty fucking easy for me to get through that one <laughs> <laughs> i don't really have a problem there buddy oh lord oh that's funny so yeah burn after writing burn after tacos this is hard shell tacos my name is leo i'm joined by my wonderful cousin lily we are going to be exploring the deepest recesses of our taco shells. What are those? You decide. Let's get to it. Uh, <laughs> describe how you feel from the last episode to now on a scale of one to five. I'll start. It's, I want to say five, but having bipolar disorder, I know that a lot of my energy and stuff is coming from swinging manic at the moment. So it's kind of a four wherein it's a little bit of a damper it's like fuck this isn't actually me but it, at the same time it is i don't know it, it feels a little bit like imposter syndrome kind of gotcha but yeah it's it's still all right though uh, i'm still enjoying it i think i used invigorated already a few weeks ago so if i had to give it a single word energetic okay um let's see for me uh, there, there's a lot of uh, emotions going on today specifically i'm all over the place um uh, like today marks two years since my grandmother passed so there's that i i, I did some crying this morning because i miss her um i'm probably gonna say i'm at a five right now because i'm going on vacation yeah <laughs> And um, I'm going to see the Foo Fighters and um, I'm going to describe my feeling as like very excited because I don't know if you remember this, but I was obsessed with NSYNC. Yes. <laughs> as a teenager. Yeah. Like obsessed, posters all over the wall. Um, well, this Friday they're releasing a new single for like the Trolls soundtrack. <laughs> That's cool. And... I've been losing my shit ever since, <laughs> like, I heard about it, and, like, they just recently made an appearance on, like, the MTV VMAs, and I lost it. Yeah, I know they've been um, coming, they've been getting back together and appearing. Yeah, and stuff. so, so I'm, like, I've been losing my fucking mind, like, 13-year-old me is just very excited, um, because <laughs> of all this stuff happening, I'm going to have that song on repeat and I'm going to cry every single time I hear it because it's been like 23 years since, you know, they've done any music together. Right. Um, so I, I'm very excited for that. I always and... liked them more than Backstreet Boys from mm -hmm. back in that time. Yeah. Like I've recently, because um, like I actually was able to go to one of their concerts um, in like 2001. Uh, I like took pictures and all this stuff. And, like, I, I'm an idiot for not bringing this stuff with me when I moved out here, but I left it, you know, at home. Like, I had all their CDs, I had books, I recorded everything they did um, on TV. You know, any and every appearance they were on, I did. I had, you know, all these posters that I had plastered over my walls. Um, and then I had my ticket stub and pictures from the concert. Um, unfortunately, I don't know who, but someone threw all my stuff away when I moved out here. So I have no, none of those, you know, memories anymore. The same thing um, happened to me when I left for the military. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm really not sure who who threw my stuff away, but I'm really sad that it's all gone because I, I had so much shit. But, um... Did I hear I you found... have it in NSYNC book? Yeah. 
Yeah. What? What about what? I actually, just about then. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, and I actually found it recently on Amazon for like three bucks, so I ordered it <laughs> and I got it. Because I'm like, I, I love that book, whatever fucking book that was. And then, um, like, I, I got DVDs of like one of their making of their tours, their HBO special that my parents ordered for me on pay per view when it came out, because I was like, I have to watch this. And, and some other DVDs of them. I bought um, one of their. Uh, records on vinyl <laughs> so I have some t-shirts um, so yeah it's like all coming back to me and my boyfriend's like sick of me already because he's like you're really a fangirl I'm like yes I am yeah, and I'm that's... like I know I'm not gonna shut up about that's it now what happened back then. <laughs> yeah and I was telling him I was like be lucky that I'm not gonna be here with you Friday because that song is gonna be on repeat like <laughs> So and I'm is this is it the is the book a Insync's uh, April thirtieth survival guide? No, it's um here I'll pull it up. What do you what do you what are you supposed to do? How do you prepare when it's gonna be May? <laughs> oh man, I can hear the collective eyes rolling now. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Um, <laughs> yeah, that they do have like a Fisher Price Little People set of fencing, really? and I have to have it. I'm like, I don't care if I have kids, but I need whatever that is. Yeah, the book that I got uh, that I used to have is just in sync, the official book, and it just has like how they started as a band and little dealios here and there about each member and all that shit. Um, but I recently found it. And I got it like a couple days ago, and I was excited because that was one of the things that got tossed out was that book. And I know I had another one, but I can't remember what it was called. So you mentioned that today where you had some mixed emotions. So the first question actually is, how does crying make you feel? It depends on what is causing me to make, you know, what the cause of be crying is so <laughs> if it's like um crying over something good you know i it makes me feel great if um i'm crying over like past traumas or if i'm hurting it makes me feel like an idiot and just dumb because i wasn't ever allowed to express myself and if i cry when i'm angry that sometimes feels okay so it's it depends on what it is that's making me cry. Hmm. Crying like this over morning. Past difficulties. Go ahead. Yeah. Like this morning, I was crying because I remembered, you know, that today is uh, the day that my grandmother passed two years ago, and I was looking at some pictures that I had of her, and just remembering her. I'm gonna try not to cry right now. Uh, <laughs> I was remembering like her voice and, and her hugs and her singing and then I just started crying because I just miss her you know all the time and it just sucks that I didn't get to see her as much as, as I wanted to because we lived in different states we only went to see her during the summertime but I do remember I would call her a lot like within these last 10 years or so we would we would call each other like every week or every other week and I was remembering the last conversation I had with her a few days before she passed. She was lucid. She had Alzheimer's and dementia. So that was difficult to deal with, you know, as it was progressing with her. But with this last phone call, she remembered who I was. Fuck. Um, it's fine. And, <laughs> if you need and, to stop, let me know. No, it's and I just, you know, told her that I love her. And, and she told me that too. And... Um, yeah, that was just, I'm thankful that I had that last conversation with her and that she, you know, was... She was there. Lucid, you know, for just a little bit of time. But yeah, I, I miss her. I miss her a lot. But I'm thankful that, you know, I inherited her musical gifts. And I know she's still, you know, with me in spirit. Something that you that mentioned, one... or the, something that you said really stood out to me was when you're thinking about <clears throat> excuse me your earlier life 
that and when you cry about those things um mm -hmm. you know like the negative experiences that you've had you said that you feel dumb why do you feel dumb that's not dumb um well as a kid i was not i was made fun of or made to feel shame for expressing my emotions so whenever i cry when i think back of stuff like that i just feel shameful and i just feel i don't know but then the terrorists win i know that's how I know. They, that's what they want that, that's yeah, what they that's... wanted and you're continuing to do it yeah it's, it's just, just something it. that i'm trying to i'm trying to work through that because like it's hard for me to express myself i mean i i can easily do it with you because i feel very comfortable with you enough to do that right because i know i'm not gonna get shamed or anything like that but if it's like with other people that aren't my best friends or like you know my boyfriend or you Confidence. i don't feel yeah i don't feel that shame but if it's like anywhere else or even if i post about it on social media <clears throat> i end up deleting it later on because i feel so stupid you know and it yeah. like and i and like people used to make me feel like i'm always like oh woe is me feel bad for me i don't i don't even like sympathy <laughs> you know yeah like i don't need people to feel bad for me because it literally makes me feel so much worse and i hate it so usually when i like do post something on social media i always you know mention in there please don't feel bad for me i don't want it I it's, don't want it. But if it's you were posting all po if you were posting all positive stuff, then people would just be all fucking peeved like you're oh you're you're posing for social media. That's not what your life's really like. Uh, you're yeah. such a faker. Man, yeah. get the fuck out of here. That's why I don't really post anything anymore. It's fucking stupid. Yeah. Social yeah, media in like, general is dumb. I agree. Yeah, I just feel very stupid sometimes, you know, posting like Anytime I try to get vulnerable, I just, I don't know, I feel disgusting doing it because I'm like, oh my god, people are going to think, like, because that's pretty much how people in our family have made me be perceived as someone who's just seeking, you know, someone to feel bad for them all the time. Right. Or whatever, and that's totally not the case. Like, I don't like, I don't need people to feel sorry for me. I don't like it because it makes me feel worse and it's because of you know how i grew up I, it's something that i've always struggled with and i try to work on sometimes i'm like fuck it i don't care what people think but there's other times where i just it really gets into my head and i end up just deleting whatever i post yeah i remember a few weeks so, ago you were talking about something do you put more energy into fitting in or standing out and mm -hmm. you were pretty much like i don't give a shit yeah. So I'm seeing how those two outlooks kind of conflict or contradict. Yeah, each other. I'm a very contradictive Yeah, you have I'm a mentioned very contradictive that too. <laughs> human being. Thanks to my parents and all this yes. shit I'm trying to work through. Like yeah. I'm very contradicting and I, I, I I'm very aware of that. <laughs> For okay. sure. And I hate it. <laughs> Man okay. How do how does crying make me feel uh i used to be the same really really emotional kid had uh crying fits all the time and i recalled mm -hmm. the same kind of shame and people trying to shame me embarrass me and or make fun of me it's like, okay well yeah fine thanks now i feel worse yeah uh, <laughs> yeah that's not gonna and then help you just me bottle up and, yep. Yeah. That's and exactly you it. You just bottle, bottle up, up those emotions and then you just <clears throat> fucking like explode one day, you know? Mm. And that's not healthy. But I've noticed that with you too, with us growing up. Like, I really want to ask, you know, people like, why were we treated like this? And why was it okay for everyone else to treat us like this? Yeah. But it's pretty much because we were not, you know, conforming to who the same shit that they were, you know, and we were just the odd ones. Which is a good thing, because who wants to be like everyone else? Um, I sure as hell don't. I'm like, I sure as hell don't. So, um, I I did know that's yeah. We were both treated like yeah. shit, like, and it sucks. So, so there was that bit. So that's kind of the, I don't know, the origin part of it, and then mm -hmm. it developed with 
various abuses in my more early teens, mid-teens, and like, I don't know, like from 10 to 15 or something like that. Little, yeah. There's a little bit more on either end, but i just gotcha. leaving it there. So that yeah. made it, made me more, I don't want to, I want to say erratic, but that makes it seem like I was, like I'm not all the way there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It made me more prone to doing those, to having more like emotional outbursts. Um, yeah. Military time was fine. There is obviously a <clears throat> major culture of macho man in the military. So like crying in the military is not a good thing, really. Yeah. It's it, it's weird because there's the same contradiction. Of, mm -hmm. There are times where it is acceptable, and off you know typically at a funerals that was mm -hmm. kind of, that seems like the only time that people were allowed to just, yeah which is kind of dumb i was i i was sent in a a message to a different podcast it, they're in the uk so i was okay. uh, hoping that uh, my american accent would get me in but anyway <laughs> one of the things that i mentioned was as much as that is the culture that the military does try to promote even mm -hmm. if it's even if they say otherwise that it, it is implicit that you that yeah. be stoic mm -hmm. and thinking on it was i don't know anyone personally but i'm just one step removed from lots more suicides than i care to count and yeah this is coming from mat, uh, macho manly men with like super awesome viking beards or something and mm -hmm. they couldn't express themselves and the only way they could was ending their own life and it's really yeah. fucking stupid yeah so it took yeah. me a while to get over that to be honest with mm -hmm. you i think the only time in the military i cried was once in afghanistan um it was after it's one of the first times we were in you know combat yeah and uh yeah the the adrenaline the adrenaline of that and then seeing somebody die was like it was pretty rough and so once that once that adrenaline wore off i was sobbing like a baby yeah uh, i didn't that's not an easy thing to do you know <laughs> like golly you have to i i really <laughs> it's um how did, but how did i feel about it i felt em i was feeling embarrassed i yeah. was trying to hide like i would hide try to find some place to hide so that people wouldn't see me mm -hmm. and it was really dumb i don't know why i felt that way when yeah that was their friend too so mm -hmm. it's probably just because of that environment that you were in you know yeah. there's all this machismo going on and oh you're a puss you know if you cry or whatever this you isn't know? the time for that is kind yeah. of the mentality is we'll do that yeah. later but yeah. later never comes uh, how do I feel about it now? Now that I've come out the other end of a lot of that, uh, I feel pretty okay with it. Um, mm -hmm. I I view it as just a normal expression. Like, a, it's an expression of, I don't know, a stronger degree of feeling. Whether that be anger. I don't think I've cried out of anger before. But there's that. Mm -hmm. Sadness, obviously. Yeah. The only other time... I don't know, movies make me cry a lot. I get, I empathize a lot with the characters, and so when they are going through something really difficult, it, I feel it as well. Even though I know it's fake, it's really silly. So I guess in that regard, crying makes me feel a little silly. But at the same time, I don't mind. Like, I say it all the time, I'm a big fucking sap. I, I don't, I am what I am, and I'm a sap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've become more of a sap with the you know years but um there's a lot of times where i just like shove it all down yeah you know sometimes especially if i'm at work i like i gotta suck it up whatever it is that i'm dealing with and just power through let's see so you started the crying one so what's on my bucket list uh a lot of them are travel related same so i'm not I always, I feel weird about putting like travel destinations on bucket list. 
I feel like bucket list is more of like an action or activity that mm-hmm. you do. Uh, with yes, traveling is an activity, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like skydiving or bungee jumping. Yeah. Shit like that. I get huh. to knock off one of my uh, bucket list items uh, this week, this coming week. Yeah. <laughs> Foo Fighters. Yep. Yeah, buddy. I want to meet Chino. Oh my, my god, that would be cool. That's a bucket list item for me. Like, if, if I died, yeah. I would feel very content. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's, I don't know, some of the other ones kind of can't. Um, bucket list is our would possessions count like ha- getting something, buying something? Yes, okay. that counts. So one of those uh, life goal purchases, there is a first edition autographed Count of Monte Cristo. Ooh. Yeah, and it costs about as much as as a house. <laughs> okay. So is that, it the book? Yeah, right? it's the, it's the actual okay. book. Um, nice. 1860s Alexander Dumas signed it. That's that's pretty an cool. original an original print, and yeah, it's it's really fucking expensive. And but <laughs> like that to me, that's that'll be I guess a bucket list item. Like I have this, I have been able to reach this point. Yeah, I am contented. Could I do a lot of other more charitable things with that money? Yes, I could. Uh, do mm-hmm. I still would I still be doing charitable things yes I would because I do them right now and I don't have you know like six figures to spend on a book but I still do yeah. it it's, it's, that, <laughs> that's not going to change uh, other bucket list items <laughs> there's a uh, <clears throat> very common dude one uh, mm-hmm. actually office space they have the conversation at the beginning what would I do with a million dollars? Two chicks at the oh, same yeah, time, yeah. man. <laughs> <That's>, I'm, <laughs> I, I am more than movie. certain that is just a common man's wish to disappoint two women at the same time. That would be fantastic, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I um so that movie was filmed out filmed out here, really. And um I had a friend that lived in the same like in the apartment complex, you know, where it was filmed. Uh, yeah, cool. and then I. I was I almost moved in point but they ended up I don't know so it fell through mm. um, but yeah that that uh that movie was mostly filmed out here which is pretty cool hmm do I have any other bucket list items having my business take off I, that I don't know if that's a bucket list item though like more than just like a dream or a goal yeah um I think maybe for the bucket list, if that, if the, like this media thing takes off to that point, Mm -hmm. being able to interview people like Chino or whatever, or whoever else, that would be, I guess, bucket list item would be people I want to interview. That'd be cool. Well, that's it for me. me Yeah. Oh, (laughs) one of mine will be to travel to Scotland with my dad since that's where a lot of our ancestry is from. Mm -hmm. Another, like, bucket list item is, of course, going to see the Steelers play in Pittsburgh at their... uh, Yeah, it's now called Akersher, but... It's Heinz. Yeah, it's Heinz. I'm like, I don't like this fucking new name. (laughs) And then another bucket list item is to go to Disneyland, Disney World, and the Wizarding World... Oh, um, the Wizarding World was would be amazing. I would love to go there. Yeah, yeah. Your sister goes there a lot, and I'm like, man, take yeah, me with they you. Yeah, they get annual passes. Oh, so that's they go, they go how twice she a does year. does it. Okay. I yeah. think she's going to be going this like week or something, I think. Um, I can't remember. In a few or weeks. Or next week. Yep. Yeah, yeah. She got me a Newt Scamander wand the last time. She, <laughs> she got went, me a Dumbledore. Yeah, I was like, can you give me a wand, please? <laughs> like, I went to Disneyland. Um, I don't think you were even born yet. <laughs> Back in, fuck, I don't know. Um, could have been the year you were born. I'm not too sure. So I, I was like, like three four. or four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and your sister was there um, and then it was my brother our two cousins and our aunt um, mm-hmm. but that's the only time I ever went to Disney and I would love to go back it's just I gotta find someone who wants to go with me you mm-hmm. know I went once um, after outside of a, uh, I think a family trip I, I don't know it was maybe somewhere from like age 6 to 8 I want to say okay. somewhere in that area yeah. I did go again. I would think I was 12 or 13. Okay. And then that's it. I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever want to go, <laughs> especially Wizarding World, I'm down. Yeah, I, I really want to go. I fucking Harry Potter stuff. I got a Hufflepuff, you know, swag to wear. <laughs> Is that, isn't that a Universal Studios? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that one's like an hour away from Disneyland, from what I saw on the map. Huh. Um, an hour, but yeah. so that would be like four hours driving. I think, <laughs> uh, yeah, with the traffic, traffic joke. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. So, core yeah, memory that's... unlocked. One mm-hmm. time I was age somewhere from four to six, or four or five, something like that, went to Universal Studios got on a an escalator got on an escalator oh, and <laughs> tying my shoes was very difficult for me for a considerable amount of time much longer mm-hmm. than it should be but whatever i suffered through it my mm-hmm. shoelaces got caught in the escalator Oh my god, that is like a big fear of mine, man, getting stuck in one of the most. Did you like lose your shoe or what? Um, I no, they uh I remember my father was there and then some other passerby, they pulled me out. Okay. But yeah. That's a uh, oh core gosh. memory. And that yeah. one of my earliest memories is a scent memory from there. Okay. This I smell it every so often. It's a it's certain type of women's perfume it's really floral it smells okay. kind of like granny-ish okay <laughs> i have a yeah i went to universal fuck i think i was like 13 or 14 or some shit around there maybe 12 11 i don't know but i remember we got on the jurassic park ride and yes. our like latch thing wasn't latched all the way and there's a moment, you know, where the ride just drops, like if you're tr- trying to go into uh, the T-Rex's mouth almost. I almost fell out of that fucking ride. Like, my <laughs> mom had to hold on to me because I was, like, starting to lean forward too much and, like, the fucking latch wasn't on there, right? So I almost fucking plummeted, you know, into fucking t- the T-Rex's mouth. <laughs> I don't know if these oh, are my heavy, God. but we, we're, we're really... Uh behind on time which isn't yeah, necessarily yeah. a bad thing but so the heavy prompts these are the heavy ones are from the 300 prompt journal i got at target so okay. i'll start this one wait yes i'll start this one whatever do you think every situation can have a silver lining why or why not i will say yes because any like you can learn a lesson from anything even if it's an example of the wrong thing to do you mm-hmm. can still learn from those things. Um, mm-hmm. So, I don't know. That's like really shitty silver that it's like, yeah. like hey, I'm not going to abuse my kids. Uh, hey, I'm yeah. not going to fucking touch little kids in places I shouldn't. Yeah. It, it's a really shitty silver lining, but, or not shitty. It's a, Those are good <laughs> good things to to want, want to be or aspire to do um, mm-hmm. or not do, so... But yes, everything can have a silver lining. I think it's a matter of whether or not you take advantage of it or, I don't know, see it through, I suppose, would be a better way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I used to not think that way. I was just very, you know, black and white all the time. But as I got older, I've started to kind of think, you know, like you said, uh, there's a lesson in pretty much everything, you know, that happens to you or doesn't happen to you. So, same. I'm just going to say same. Yeah. Even though I used to not be like that, but same. All right. So, you, there is a there is an inherent lesson. Mm-hmm. Do these things happen for a reason? That's a tough one. Yeah. 
that's a tough one because like there's some situations where yeah sure things should happen for a reason yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, because I, I was I thinking about even it. They're answer not that the same thing. Without getting angry, like no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, uh, I, I yeah. don't think it, they do either. That type of shit really upsets me. Is mm -hmm. I hate it, when people say that, yeah. like, oh, maybe it happened for a reason. What me getting my ass beat, you know, and yeah. all this other shit was for a reason. What's what's the reason? Because I deserved it, or right? What did I, I, did I do something in the future? <laughs> that somebody yeah. fucking for had the foresight to punish me for now yeah that, i yeah that, that I one got the same thing <laughs> that one pisses me yeah. off I'm sorry, i don't because i'm like no yeah so same thing um <laughs> with people who try to do the the religious angle which to me makes it even worse than just the generic happens for a reason mm -hmm. so there's that part of it but even like, oh yeah god has god knows his plans for you so, so his that plan was for me to get all this shit like no <laughs> yeah yeah being raped as a young boy that was is that what god yeah. likes yeah i like, don't think we're i don't think we know about the same his one plans? <laughs> right <laughs> so no they don't happen for a reason but you can learn from things well then you know people who say things happen for a reason like uh, you were walking and uh, you step just one you took one step to the right and you a piano didn't fall on your head mm -hmm. something like that like it's some sort of divine machination when like no it's more of it's it's perfect chaos which yeah. is it's a it's an oxymoron but if things weren't exactly as they are right now we wouldn't exist it's really That's it's true. really simple if things weren't perfect we wouldn't be here they just yeah. so happen to line up the way that they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. I think people do that to try to as assert some form of control or under yeah. like a controlled understanding. Yeah. Of exactly. why things are the way they are. Yeah. The, and it's difficult, especially for people who I don't know who have never really had anything traumatic happen to them. Yeah. And then when they do, and they start questioning reality. Mm -hmm. is shade and fraud a little bit there <laughs> shade and yeah. fraud or whatever it is yeah yeah <sighs> all right well look <laughs> that at... one really pissed me off i'm like <laughs> golly yeah all right so what gives you hope and why i'll start with this one uh what gives okay. me hope is i remember reruns obviously of uh mr rogers neighborhood oh man yeah and seeing even aspects of him being other people having those same attributes uh, mm -hmm. one of his more popular quotes is like you know, when you when you see all the the chaos or you know the negativity all the bad things happening look for the helpers there's always yeah. always somebody helping yeah so, he, whatever the case may be maybe they can't intervene at the exact moment but they'll do whatever the fuck they can for you after <laughs> Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's what gives me hope is I know I'm that way. Yeah, I know I am. I don't it's I know I am. So I and I want to believe I choose to believe this is I take it on faith that other mm -hmm. people are that way too. more. They are yeah. more that way helpful than they are hateful. Mm -hmm. I'm like trying to think um, what gives me hope just knowing that you can rise out of any bad situation like you and I for example you know you can get through the difficult times and that there are people out there that are you know mm. truly wholeheartedly good people so that's what get, that's what gives me hope just knowing that you know we can push through things even when it's absolutely difficult we can still get through it and just knowing that we, even those who have been put through, you know, hellish situations can still turn out to be good people and that there are just good people out there. That's just mine. <laughs> that reminds me when you said, um, as I was being um, released from the hospital, this one time I was uh, held there, <clears throat> mm -hmm. I, as I was leaving, I was getting my stuff. Uh, um, 
putting my shoelaces back in my shoes, for example. No, um, yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting there, and they bring in this young lady, and she's on a like a stretcher, okay. or uh, whatever the, the is that what the ambulances use? Are yeah, they, okay, yeah, yeah. So stretcher, and so there she's the EMTs are talking to the nurses and stuff, so mm -hmm. she's just kind of strapped to a stretcher. They're kind of stuck. And she's just blank stare up to the ceiling or whatever and just silent tears just really mm -hmm. slowly. I'm like, I know exactly what you're feeling. I don't know what made you feel that way. Don't I don't want to claim I do. But I know exactly what you're feeling. So I went to her and then grabbed her hand and said, like, it can be better. It's not going to be easy. But it can mm -hmm. happen. It can be done. Yeah. Yeah. At some point, you have to really be willing to do it because it's fucking difficult. <laughs> yeah. So if you're not willing to deal with the hardship of it, you're never going to be rid of it. That's true. Man, I think uh, our heavy section, we uh, maybe we burnt it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, like, I mean, it does take, like, a insanely amount of courage and strength to you know rise mm -hmm. above and continue through those difficult situations yeah. um it's definitely not easy but you just have to find that fight within yourself to fight for yourself uh, and you know realize that you're gonna be okay and rise above it to help you get through it like obviously i survive out of spite um, <laughs> so that's usually my thing that keeps me going and because I know there's something greater out there for me that I have no idea what it is yet but I know there's something I'm here for a reason there's a purpose to my life <clears throat> even though I was made to feel like there wasn't but it's, it's yeah when, when you're in those like dark dark places it's just very difficult to get out of it sometimes and you just have to believe in yourself and know that you're going to be okay and part of um, the courage though if i i would like to add sometimes mm -hmm. a big for this was actually the harder for me than mm -hmm. than uh trudging through my own bullshit yeah be, having the courage to ask for help Oh yeah, I that you, struggle with that too. Admitting, saying straight up, I cannot fucking do this. I can't. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. Yeah. It, that's to me that's harder. Cuz I I survived out of spite my entire goddamn life. So uh, yeah. <laughs> that that isn't difficult for that wasn't difficult for me. It was the mm -hmm. the trusting part. Yeah, that's where I am like I don't really trust a lot of people to help me because it usually gets thrown in my face later, so I, I am very hyper independent. Yeah, I know what you um, mean. Because of that, and yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm too stubborn sometimes to ask for help, but there's some days where I'm like, I, you know, yeah, I can't do this, so I'll reach out to whoever it is that I know will help me without, you know, shame or throwing it back into my face. Yeah, that one's a work in progress for me because I still. I don't trust people hardly, but that's a work in progress for me is the asking for help thing. Yeah. Um, look for the helpers. Mr. Roger yeah. said it himself. That's true. <laughs> the, okay. Now let's move into the light section stuff. That's a, a little softer on the soul. Okay. So I'll start this one. The mm -hmm. single most profound act of kindness. I will never forget. I honestly haven't had a whole lot of profound acts of kindness bestowed upon me. And the profundity of this one is not in its magnitude. It's, mm -hmm. I'll tell you and I'll try to explain. It's, when I was a kid, family's Catholic, big surprise, I was going to catechism. Yeah. And I was going through all that stuff, and mm -hmm. one time the for instead of um, Sunday school, they took us to a roller rink. So oh, okay. I was like, "Whoa, this is cool!" Uh, all right. Well, 
I didn't have any money for anything, so I'm just kind of sitting there, like, or walking around. And I asked the, uh, the, the Sunday school teacher, I cannot remember her name. Um, I asked, I just, I knew I was going to get shot down as I was walking mm-hmm. up to her. I was just certain of it. I, I just asked for a dollar. So okay. I could, so I could get a, get a drink and a snack. Mm-hmm. And yeah, didn't even hesitate. Just, yes, here you go. A kid that I only see once a week. Yeah. <laughs> but that, in ref- in hindsight, at the time, I didn't think much of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, when I look back on that, that's... I try to have that same grace and charity. Yeah. In my, in my own actions. Um, when I worked be- pre-pandemic, everyone had to be in the office. I would go to... I would work downtown in downtown Phoenix Mm -hmm. and there's a fuck ton of panhandlers no shit of course but there was one very clearly homeless guy he's very clearly unwell ribs sticking out never eats or anything so I made it a point if I would go I always went to Subway for lunch just get the you know whatever the special of the day is and i would just i would just, mm-hmm. just get two instead of getting a fancy sandwich for myself just get two yeah. two of the a foot long of the mm-hmm. special and then i would always get yeah. always walk around to find him and give him a sandwich every single yeah. day it was just he'd never ask me for anything he would see me he w- he recognized me he knew who i was i still oh, don't know okay. his name but I see, I would see him. He would look at me, and then I'd kind of give him that, like a little nod, like, "Hey, just you know, wait here. I'll be, uh, I'll be back in a few minutes." Yeah. Never said a word to him. He never said a word to me. I think about him a lot. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. Uh, um, can you repeat that question? <laughs> The single most <laughs> profound act of kindness I will never forget. For me, it was the dollar and how, but the impact it had on me was mm-hmm. in, in, insane. Yeah, I haven't um, really had a moment like that, but I have a family member who just is, he has the biggest heart ever. I'm going to, actually, there's two people. One of them is my brother, you know, he, after work, goes to the children's hospital and volunteers all the time. Um, You know, he used to grow out his hair, donate his hair. I'm not sure if he still does that or not, but my my brother, I'm probably going to cry because I love my brother, (laughs) but he has, sorry, he has the biggest heart. Uh, Yeah, I can, I see it often. You know? Yeah. Despite all the shit that he's gone through as well, he he's always just he's an angel. He's literally just an angel and he has such a big caring heart. He was born with, you know, health issues. He was a a preemie baby, so he yeah. had to stay in the hospital for a long time and be, I think because of that it inspired him to want to help, you know, give back to PCH. kids like him, you yeah. know. Um, but yeah, my brother, he's, he's a beautiful human being, you know, even though we're not on the best of terms, I love him dearly. And he has just an amazing heart for all that he's been through. And I just, I admire the shit out of him for that. Our mutual Um, cousin referred to him as a saint. Yeah, he literally is one. He is a godsend and I'm lucky he's my brother and... I admire him so much for, you know, the stuff that he does. He's all about, you know, wanting to help and give back wherever he can. Yeah. Another person that's like that is my dad's younger brother. He is a veteran as well. He can't really work with other people because of his his PTSD is really bad. Yeah. To where he can't. But he also, like, even his wife, like, they, they are just fucking saints too like they moved to Missouri to be you know with my grandparents after he got out of the army they took care of my grandparents until their last breath and 
that's just, you know, to, to kind of put your life aside, you know, to take care of other people and your parents is just amazing. And then another thing that my uncle does um, is he helps other veterans. He does a lot of that. He helps, you know, the Amish, because there's a lot of, uh, there's yeah, a big Amish, Amish community yeah. out there. So he helps them out all the time. And I got to meet a lot of them at my grandmother's funeral. And I was just shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I did not know uh, my grandparents were this close to this community and that, you know, my uncle was that close. But that man has a heart of gold as well. Um, like when my grandpa died, you know, they helped pay for my way to get out there, you know. I didn't go to his funeral, but I went the week before he died. Like, I, they got me like tickets for a greyhound to get out there they um just helped me out while i was out there and then when my grandmother passed you know they let me stay with them um and just made me feel at home like i i i love i love my uncle and my aunt because they they also have an amazing heart um and I'm, I'm probably just going to say my dad, too. You know, my dad is a an amazing human being because he always helps people out. You know, he's been a dad for those who did not have one. Yeah. Or who didn't have, like, a father figure. Like, he literally raised everyone. He was there. He was, you know, not just my dad, but he was there for everyone else who didn't have one. But yeah, though I haven't experienced it myself, but I, you know, have seen it in other people and it's just I admire I admire them very much for all of what they do. Do you think wow. uh with all that you've experienced that you could do end of life care for your parents? I plan on doing it. Okay. 100%. If it was today um, yeah. or like they call tomorrow? just yeah they, they know that i will of course yeah so. they know that i'm gonna drop everything for them all right um i and i think my brother might you know probably do the same but i've told my parents because i don't want them going into a nursing home because they're abusive there too yeah they can um, be absolutely yeah like my grandparents when they went into hospice they did not want to be in a hospital or anything like that um like i remember when before my grandpa died, he was in the hospital and he didn't want to be there. So they discharged him and we did his hospice care in his house. Like they both died in their own home. Where they um, should. Yeah. So like one of the things I eventually want to do is go back to school for vocational nursing. That way, when that time comes for my parents. You'll be ready. I'll be ready to do that i may not be ready right right away you know because nursing programs out here take a shit ton of time to get into they're very hard to get into <laughs> they're difficult to get in for women yeah 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 because um, the, the want for male nurses is mm -hmm. steep yeah like my dad actually that's <clears throat> how my parents met was in a nursing home my dad was one of the uh orderlies yeah he and my mom i think did janitorial work there Eventually, my dad got out of it because he had too many patients die in his arms, and that was just, I think, too much for him to handle. Yeah, that'd be rough. Um, yeah, so he, you know, went into mechanics and plumbing, and he loves it. Like, he, when he was in the Navy, he was doing the program for either nursing or to be a doctor there because the Navy has a really good medical yeah. program. Of course I they do. They get... have to take care of our dumbasses. Uh, yeah. The Marine like... Corps, I mean take care yeah. of us <laughs> like i wanted to go into the navy for that because like my love for science comes from my dad i love it and i belong in the medical field somewhere or in the musical field i don't know <laughs> either one of those but my parents know and i've always told them like the only time i will ever move back is when they tell me that they cannot care for themselves anymore i also don't trust other people taking care of my parents like i'm very Oh my god i forgot the word not territory i'm very protective, protective over loved ones <laughs> very protective of my parents it's weird i don't know if it's just me having been in the military so and being single i had to live in the barracks 
uh, or dorms you might know them as uh, so I had to live in that yeah so for me the idea of like a nursing home is fucking rad I don't know that just that shit just sounds really fun like it, yes oh street God. fighter tournaments on Friday uh, better bring your best fucking game bitch because we're betting teeth on it or something <laughs> I don't know I always thought it would be really fun it sounds fun yeah. to me yeah um, but if I were I don't know if, if I were in a situation where like I'm at the age I am now I'm married I have like whatever kids and as I'm getting older then you know having mm -hmm. possibly grandkids and etc then it would be a little bit less I, I just imagine myself as an old man right now yeah then I, like a single man I wouldn't I would not mind one bit. Yeah. I also hear there's a lot of banging that goes on in there. So yeah, uh, there's yeah. I hear a lot of stories, but a lot of the stuff like um, that I've seen is are just... bad in nursing yeah. homes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I hear. I personally would. I don't know where the fuck I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'll probably end up in a nursing home. But as far as my parents go, I would rather take care of them myself. They could possibly be abused, and I don't want any of that. <laughs> Maybe my end of life plan is to liquidate all of my assets, take the minimal amount I need to accomplish the following, but I give everything to whoever, like relatives. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And uh, assorted charities. But I take yeah. my minimal amount and I disappear. That's it. Don't worry okay. about where I'm going. Don't worry about what I'm yeah. going to do there. Just, <laughs> I'm gone. Oh my goodness. I'm going to be a. I'm gonna then I'm gonna come back as a ghost and haunt you. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably do the same thing. Be like, peace. Like, you know that that <laughs> gif of the 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 black kid throwing up the peace and then fading away. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. I'm, like, yeah. I'm out of here, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's wrap this up. The last thing is the movie of me. Uh, so we got a title. I, don't, I put four, you don't have to pick four, but uh, starring roles for whatever prominent people you want to pick. And then your opening, main, and closing songs. Oh god, you go first, because yeah. I have a thing. I've, um, got the, I've, I've got a song picked out, but... Movie title for yeah. me is Lion's Pride. It's easy. Uh, me, my name, yeah. obviously Lion, and then, you know, me yeah. rediscovering it for myself. Yeah. And then also having like 50 fucking kids because I'm a potent male. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a harem of women. Oh, Lord. Yeah, that, that's more for the fun. But me, uh, yeah. Lion's Pride would definitely be. That is my, I'll say working title because I might come up with something better. I'll keep going and let me know when you start uh Start one another. Yeah, I'll just just make. finish it, right. and then I'll 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 do it. So, starring as me, is Jay Hernandez. Okay. Um, I believe he was in Prison Break and Hostel. Those are the only things I remember him from. He's not as good looking as I am, so you know you'll have to use your imagination when you're watching it. But <laughs> it's all right. Uh, we'll manage. I don't know what she sounds like. I know that she's from Brooklyn. But I'm certain she's an actress. She can fucking mask the accent. Mm -hmm. Rosie Perez would be my mother. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Rosie Perez. My sister would be Katie Holmes. I, yes, I see that. She's got that little mousy face, as we always yep. used to tell her. <laughs> that would be her. Who, like, who's a character actor that routinely plays a shitty, mean person specifically oh, a male <laughs> yeah what i already knew i'm like oh god <laughs> oh. Um. kevin spacey robert de niro wow kevin spacey that works on multiple levels <laughs> but yes. no no fuck that dude there's jack nicholson anthony hopkins Christopher Walken, Willem Dafoe, Alan Rickman. Willem Dafoe might be a good one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I think that's yeah, that's gonna, gonna be my pick. Okay. 
so that's uh, Rosie Perez, Katie Holmes, Willem Dafoe, and then Jay Hernandez for me. I don't know who else is significant enough. You know, actually, yes, I know. Um, I will. Nope, not her. Nope. Lindsay will be played by Winona Ryder. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can see that. Other than that, whoever plays Maggie, like a... whoever plays Maggie has to be a beagle. I guess. <laughs> well, you know, I could go with some friends, but for the sake of time. Hmm. The opening credits. It's difficult to decide because my life took such a dramatic shift once I got out of the military. Was, well, I mean, no shit. I was a completely different person. Yeah. I was about to say that. Because um, right now my brain is saying Take 5 by uh, Dave Brubeck. So it might be... Like, right now I want to say it's Take 5. Okay. But I'm just going to go with that just because... Uh, it's the first thing that came to mind. And then isn't there like a closing song or something? Or... Opening, main, and close. You know, I'm going to change okay. some things around. My okay. opener <laughs> is Flim by Aphex Twin. Okay. The closer is Take 5. Okay. More energy up front. All right, I think I have some for mine. I just uh... got my my main song. It's going to be Summer Madness. Okay. Uh, it's originally by Casey or Cool and the Gang is the original, but I want the okay. uh, Kruang Bin uh, cover. Let me see. I have like two in mind for like titles. Um, oh shit! And it's just because I'm gonna start with my opening and closing song. All right, that's fine. Um, I've always it's one of my absolute favorite songs in the world, and it's just Moonlight Sonata. I absolutely that yeah. I love. I fucking love that song. Yeah, um, it's a good one. That song, that song will be playing at my funeral, but that one would be mine just throughout. But that that song to me just tells a really good story somehow. So then, what um, would be your closing? The same. That song oh, will just be both. What? Yes. That's yes. fucking lame. Well, I don't care. Oh, what um, a, th this a good movie's beginning. already getting it's... a one star on fucking IMDb. <laughs> I can't think of any other song but that one because it's a good beginning, middle, and end song. Because to me, it has those different parts in the song. I'm just really weird. I envision a lot of things when I'm either making songs or listening to them. So I feel all of the different emotions that have I the think first that half, they put. Have the first half of the song play for the opening. And then mm -hmm. pick back up right where it ends. Pick right back up yeah. for the closing. Yeah, that's exactly okay, what that I works. would do. All right, yeah, yeah. I'm bumping it back up. It's not one star anymore. <laughs> um, For title, this is going to be lame. Just because I love the song, it would either be called Sonata or Contradiction. Because <laughs> my life is just, my personality is a contradiction. Lilies of Contradiction? Flowers of Contradiction? Yeah. Yeah, so, something I'm like to shop that. It a little bit. I'm even, I'm even thinking like Lily of the Valley. <laughs> Whoa! Really <laughs> no, that's fucking good. <laughs> yes, that's the one. That is, okay. that has to be the fucking title right there. That's good. yeah. So, so that's the only other lame one that I came up with. Let's see. For me, well, she wasn't really an actress, but. There needs to be... I'm going to go a little off topic. There needs to be a biopic of Janis Joplin. Yes, um, and absolutely. I need to And I need to star her because I literally fucking look just like her. It's insane. And I'll, I'll show you, like, side-by-side -side pictures of me and Janis Joplin. We look a lot alike. I could play this woman, <laughs> you know? But as far as who yes, would play you me... Absolutely yeah. Could. Right? Yeah. I look exactly like her. I'm like, that. I might be her reincarnation. I don't know. But I look exactly like her. It's fucking insane. But if there's ever a biopic of her, I need to, like, figure out how to cast myself in there as the lead, you know? As far as 
who would play me? I'm trying to look at people who kind of look like me. The closest one that I can think of is like Kirsten Dunst. That's we don't a good look pick, totally alike, but I would I would pick her since we uh, there's some similarities there. But I would pick her uh, to play me. My dad is a toss up. It's either gonna be John Goodman. <laughs> That's a uh, good solely, one, be, solely because of his character in Roseanne, Dan yeah, Connor. Like that shit reminds me exactly like my dad. Um, the other one would be Tim Allen from uh, what the fuck was that show he was on? Home um, Improvement. Yes, because my dad loved that show. John Goodman I would probably, as Tim John the Goodman, Toolman Taylor. But I'd probably say John Goodman could play my dad. I don't know who would play my... Mine would be a long cast list. If we're going to go through all my trauma, there's a fucking long ass list on there. But I'll just stick to my brother and my mom. I don't know who would play either of them. All I know is that there was a basketball player on the Suns that looked just like my brother, but he's not there anymore. So for I, I know yeah. who should play your brother, but I need to find who? I need to find his name. Okay. Because he has better roles than the one that I think you might. Do you, uh, are you familiar with um, Super Troopers, the movie? Yes, uh, I love that movie. <laughs> that curly-haired guy who eats all the mushrooms and weed. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but okay. he has better roles in that. That's why I didn't want to. I didn't want that to be the one that, yeah. I, that I mentioned because that's not very fitting based on how we talked about your brother a little bit ago. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> I know exactly who you're talking about. Jeffrey Arend. Yes, that's yes, yes. Jeffrey Arend. That would yeah. be your brother. Yeah. And then as far as my mom, fuck, I don't even know, man. What is it? Joan Crawford would be a good one because if, if you've ever seen Mommy Dearest. <laughs> That woman was a nightmare. <sighs> Jenny O'Hara. So Who's that? I don't know. It's just uh, so the, I thought of Je Jeffrey Arend. I remembered from the movie Devil, the one where they're trapped on the elevator, and okay. the Devil Woman is Jenny O'Hara. It has. It's not it... entirely about the Devil part. That's not. That it just it's a good coincidence. It's serendipitous. Let me see what this lady looks like, Jenny. You know, a little work at hair. Oh makeup. yeah, 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 yeah. Should. Okay. Those are good. I would say John Goodman's the better pick. Than yeah, a, than a, same. Tim Taylor is not the same type of dude. No, but I'm like, yeah. Uh... Just the handiness, but isn't <laughs> yeah. uh, isn't the Roseanne dad, isn't he also a handy guy? I don't remember what yeah, he Yeah, John Goodman? Work. No, not yeah, John Goodman. The, uh, the character. Oh, Dan Connor? Yeah. Yeah, he did, um, I think he did, like, a lot of construction and plumbing yeah. so, <laughs> and um, mechanics, so yes. He's yeah. a, just a handyman, pretty much. Yeah. Man, G I love General that show, contract, too. General contracting? Yeah, that uh, was a good show. Lily of the Valley is fucking solid. Okay, God, so I'll do that. Damn it, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's mine. All right, <laughs> so mine. I'm going to summarize my mind real quick so my um, my movie titles lions pride jay hernandez is me uh katie holmes is my sister rosie perez is my mother uh willem dafoe is my father i was browsing around for some other ones and didn't find anything really uh let's see opening credits i moved it to apex twins flim but i want to change that now I'm not going okay. to though. But the main, <laughs> the main theme, I don't remember what I said earlier. So I'm gonna, I don't either. I'm gonna pretend that I said "While on Saturn's Rings" by uh, Ernest Gonzalez, and then the okay. closing credits is uh, "Take Five by the Rubik yeah. Band. Okay. And then mine was uh, "Lily of the Valley." Moonlight Sonata throughout, you know, beginning and end. Kirsten Dunst would play me. John Goodman would play my dad. Jenny O'Hara would play my mom. And I already forgot the guy that would play my brother. Jeffrey uh, Arendt. That fella. And that's, yeah, that's mine. Cool. Uh, okay, so housekeeping on the way out. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Socials. You know, I'm going to say that everything happens for a reason, and I am I got us back on Twitter. We're awesome. X. Yeah, we're, so we're LVX Media Net, just like everything else. 
I figured out how to auto publish the shows to YouTube. So Oh, okay. It's available there as well. LBX Media Net. Same thing. So there's those. It's worth mentioning. The so the phone number is both unattended if you want to call, no one's gonna answer. But if you want to text or if you want to leave a message a voicemail, it's anonymous. So I don't know who you are. I don't care who you are, to be honest with you. Um, if I don't like your message, I'm just going to delete it anyway. So there you go. <laughs> I don't want to fucking talk to you anyway. I'm not going to answer it. I don't even answer yeah. my own phone. What the fuck are you thinking? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> um, I got us a branded email. Um, contact at lvxmedia.net. Is, it's, on, it's also on the website, lvxmedia.net. Go to the taco page, and then the contact options are right there. But there you go. Other things. Do the internet stuff. Uh, if you could, please. It would be very much appreciated. It helps a lot. I know that everyone says that, but it really it really does. That's why they say it. Yeah. It, like following the accounts on different social platforms. Um, liking, fo- uh, following the podcast on different podcast uh, outlets. Mm-hmm. Uh, liking the episodes, rating the shows, and what what else am I thinking of? Or what sharing. I, yeah, sharing the episodes with other people. Even if you just click share, you tap on share and then copy link, and you don't even send mm-hmm. it to anyone, does a lot. Yeah. So there, we're gaming the system. <laughs> all right, so that's uh, socials and contacts. Do all the internet shit. Um, don't be a fucking pansy and leave us a message. Hmm. Yep. I think that's going to do it. Uh, we are recording our first episode of Progressive Patriots tomorrow night. We are currently finishing up this recording on the 27th at 7.30 Phoenix time. So, you know, by the next time you talk, that will be, uh, you'll be hearing from us. We'll be one Foo Fighters uh, complete. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, when Foo Fighters, I will be uh, a year older <laughs> by that time as well. Uh, yeah. My birthday is the day before the concert, so that should be interesting. There will be more football games, you know, that have happened by oh, then. I don't eat hard shell tacos in real life, so we're not. I can't say we're going to get those. I can't, can't yeah, promise that, we'll get- but get some soft tacos yeah some actual tacos yes i will admit a guilty pleasure of mine is the taco bell the dorito loco no i've never had that it's a guilty pleasure i love it okay mine is their crunch wrap supreme and i i just had it a a couple days ago and then uh, i felt horrible after so i'm like no we're gonna just (laughs) stay away from the fucking all right, uh, that's going to do it for this recipe of hard shell tacos. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for listening. Have a great week, and in honor of NSYNC, bye, bye, bye. Oh, you were I thought you were going to do the, the flippity flip. I was waiting for it. Or catch you on the flippity flip, and then, bye, bye, bye. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> it, which, oh, you, that kind of cuts over on mine. I, I'm trying to do the Shaun of the Dead. Bye, bye, oh. bye, bye. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you have any questions or comments on what was discussed or have a topic you'd like to hear on the podcast, you can leave a message on our unattended phone line at 833 589 7637. That's 833 Lux Pods. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lvxentertainment.net.